Hello, I'm Shet the Magpie and welcome to my bedroom. <gasps> oh, <I> miss this. <laughs> no, Chell and Mum have asked us to just have a little chat about sleep this month. So I wanted to just, I thought, well, I might as well invite you into my bedroom so you can just have a little look. So if you haven't been on the Channel Mom website before and you're a parent or a parent-to-be, go on and have a look because there's a really brilliant new guide. It's a kind of, it's the sleep guide and, and there's a selection of videos, loads of different tips, loads of different hacks, loads of different methods and different people's experiences as well with sleep and children from, you know, right from newborns. So let me just give you some links now so you can find that if you're ready to have a look. So it's channel, it's www.channelmum.com slash parenting slash baby slash baby dash sleep slash <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful i'll put the link below though so you can find it and there's also a, a chat section as well which is www.channelmum.com stroke slash stroke chat you see it's so sleep deprived i can't even speak properly uh, yeah but so that's where you go for all the information loads of different videos loads of videos from all the other vloggers talking about their experiences and everyone's really different i found it really interesting looking at the videos because everyone's so different their experiences but i think the general consensus is have children don't sleep <laughs> that's my experience anyway so we do things a little bit differently over here so you may or may not know, I've got five children and the age three, I'll say this is my test, this three, five, seven, twelve, and fifteen. That's that's all of them, isn't it? So it's quite different for us because you know, you've got all the kind of the newborn kind of carry on and stuff, and then you think, Oh, it ends there. We'll have no sleep then, and then it'll be fine. Turns out it goes on and on and on. So, at the moment, our sleep issues range from 15-year-olds won't go to bed and just wander the house in the middle of the night looking for snacks. And then we've got my 12-year-old who's kind of coming up to that and she's kind of struggling to sleep on a night as well. So she wants to be up doing things, reading, drawing. Actually, really, she wants to be on the gadget, but we've managed to restrict that tell you what those special apps are a lifesaver that can stop your children doing the things <laughs> anyway so so she really wants to kind of stay awake when really she should be having more sleep and then we've got seven year old seven year old she kind of struggles to sleep she wants to be staying up a little bit later she wants to be looking at books those kind of things and then the five year old and my littlest and three year old again their kind of sleep varies you know my three-year-old, if she has like one of those danger naps, you know, the ones at like about five o'clock when they fall asleep in the car and then you're like, no, no, <laughs> because you know full well they're going to be staying up later. So I'm just going to show you my bedroom. Now I've got some children in it at the moment, which this is what we do. So we do co-sleeping in our family and at the moment... In our bedroom, we have these two little beauties. You see there? So this is my five-year-old and this is my three-year-old. Now, as you can see, my five-year-old has decorated my bedroom. So we've got a selection of beautiful pictures there. He's been in charge of curating the gallery. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I'll show you our bed. So this bed here... So this is the bed that I share with these two here. So these are my nurslings. So I usually, I'll feed Alice to sleep on a night. And I've done a good job tonight because she is actually asleep. And then what I do is once they've both fallen asleep, I do this special thing, which I like to call the Labrador position. So that's where I get out of this bit of bed and then I sleep across here. <laughs> I bet Gina Ford didn't tell you about this, did she? <laughs> so, yes, I sleep in this special kind of Labrador position across the end of bed. And that started to happen because although we've been co-sleeping for a long, long time, you know, I did it. I did it with right from the older ones. So I've had lots of children in my bed for a long time. Then 
I discovered I just wanted just a few more minutes. Just I just wanted a little bit more, a bit, a little bit of space, a little bit of time. Just kind of by myself, relaxing on the night in my bed. So I decided I could just kind of shuffle to the end, and then if anyone woke up in the night, I'm still there to help out, give milk, do any of those kind of things. I usually end up with little Alice kind of moving over to me in the night but do you know what that's fine because i do like a cuddle in the night and then this area here so my husband is very lucky so this is my husband's part of the bed so this is um this is a double bed and mine's a king size so we're all just kind of here in the biggest bed in the world and do you know what it's absolutely brilliant and i think even when all the children have grown up and nobody's in my bed I think I'm still going to want this special situation. So I can go in my bed and spread out. I'll be like, oh, then he could be in his bed. So, so if you're wondering kind of why we decided to co-sleep, I just it originally started because my eldest, when he was born, he's at the birth. You can hear him downstairs. If you can hear a noise, like a bong goes in the background. It's like... What is this place, Charlotte? That's my eldest playing bongos. And what time is it? It's about half past ten. He's playing bongos. This is what this is the kind of thing you have to put up with when you've got older children. This is, these are the sleep issues. Nobody mentions those, though, do they? Never mind. You can look forward to them. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we decided. So when my eldest was little, um, he'd had. After his birth, he'd been kind of okay a little bit, but then he'd had this kind of thing where he kind of almost like choked in the night, almost like he was choking on his own spit, like he couldn't get up properly. And that was the day that I decided he would never leave my side at night, ever, because it was a terrifying experience. I'd called the midwives and they kind of ran up the corridor, got him and ran away with him down the corridor, and it was awful. And I was just like, there is no way my child is ever going to be left alone and if that something like that had happened and he'd not been able to turn and I hadn't been there, that would have been the most hideous thing ever. So that set it in stone that my child was going to be sleeping in my vicinity always. And it's kind of, kind of happened with all of them. So so it's just kind of it's really normal to me and it's really natural to me. And to back it up, there was a book that I read um, which is called The Continuum Concept by... Jean Lidoff, I think it is. Really great book. Absolutely devastating when you're first going to read. And um, because it kind of really challenges a lot of your kind of parenting preconceptions, you know, especially if you've gone from just like, just like the traditional kind of British idea of parenting. Um, you know, you kind of doing up your nursery, getting your bed ready for your little one. It's going in its cot in its own room and all those kind of things. That's kind of what we've been brought up with, really. But this kind of spoke about um, indigenous people and how they live and how families all live together and you know they all sleep close and you know originally it was to you'd sleep with your baby really close next to you to stop having been eating by bears in the night you know or foxes or that kind of thing so it was a safety thing and so our bodies are still our bodies still kind of need that and you know that's that is one of the reasons you know babies cry when they're away from the parents at night and they feel they need to kind of be close they need to kind of sense that you're around for their their safety and you know i think when you as a parent as well as a mum you'll get that feeling as well you know it's hard to sleep. If your baby's in, in another room sleeping, it's hard to sleep because you're just like, oh. And then you kind of list that listening out and all that kind of thing. And I, I'm not sure that parents, see, I don't really know as I've never tried it, but I always think to myself, do parents really get that good of sleep when the child's in another room? Surely you'd be like waking up all the time going, is the baby there? Can you hear the baby? Is the baby? At least when you know the next year, you know. You can just check on them all the time and they're safe. And, you know, it does take a while to get used to it. You know, you don't have the same kind of sleep. But I don't think that's necessarily just because that you're sleeping in the same bed as them. I think it's the sleep of the mother. And I think that... So it's basically, you become a mother. That's your sleep forever. That's your sleep gone forever. <laughs> we made the most of it when you were a teenager because it's no more. No, no more of those deep, deep sleeps. I've always got that kind of light. Your brain's listening. You, you're listening out all the time, when you, whether you know it or not. 
so yeah it does take a bit of getting used to and it takes a bit of positioning getting used to and and um, the way i kind of did it with the newborns as well you know you've got to you've got to look at the kind of safe sleeping guidelines it's really important to do that so you're making sure that you're not drinking you're not taking any medication those kind of things when the newborns you don't have a pillow i can i didn't have a pillow i just had like flat on the bed flat on the bed you don't have a duvet up by them so i'd have my covers really low down and then i'd have a little cover for the babies make sure any gaps are blocked up you know make sure they're not going to be able to fall off the bed and you can get bed guards and then you can like pat it all up you've got to be really really careful and i also I'd always put the baby on my side so they wouldn't be on the father's side because i think there's a difference in the way you kind of react and sense the babies but the mothers have that the fathers maybe don't have so you'd always have them on their side so you're kind of there in charge so, you, there's, so there's never any worry that you're going to squash them or anything like that and so I always have my bed kind of usually have it pushed up against the wall if I could if not I'd have one of those rails as I mentioned so I don't regret it I, re I don't regret co-sleeping with any of, the ch any of the children and I think it's one of those things that a lot of mums kind of want to do but think that they can maybe it's pressure from family or their partners or just thinking no people don't do that anymore that's not what we do but I, I feel like if you do want to do it you know really do go for it because I don't think you'll regret it and I think you know when it comes to your deathbed you're not going to say oh I wish I didn't spend all those nights because you know to my little one you're just not going to say it are you because you know parenting it goes quickly it doesn't seem two minutes since I was little. And now we're around with giant children, children that are bigger than me now. And it just it's like, it feels like five minutes since they were born, since they were the eldest ones were co-sleeping. So you know what? Get all your cuddles in whilst you can. And I think even if you had like a really awful kind of bad day and stuff, that snuggling up with a baby and kind of really breathing in their head, you know, it helps it makes all the difference and i'm not saying there's not going to be times when you're just like oh my god why won't you leave me alone for a minute why can't i get to sleep but you know what all parents have that so whether you're co-sleeping with them or not co-sleeping with them you're still going to have those feelings <laughs> but when you are co-sleeping there's a good chance you're going to get more sleep especially if you're breastfeeding because if you i don't know how parents do it that are breastfeeding and their baby's in another room i have no idea because oh you know just i would not be able to get up like that again and again and again and i just think why would you do it to yourself it doesn't doesn't make sense to me but anyway this is what we do here i am showing you if you knew someone like this it's fine it's cool it's great it's nice. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't have it any other way. And, you know, I'm very lucky that I've got a giant bedroom that I can fit two beds in. But before this, we had the mattresses on the floor. So you've just got as many mattresses on the floor in the bedroom as you can fit. And then you can make, like, a, a room of bed. Which, you know, it's when you're a teenager, that is the dream, isn't it? You're just going to fulfil it as an adult. And, you know, you don't need to be ashamed. You don't have to have a big posh bedroom that everyone needs to see that you can put on Instagram and go, oh, look at my nice posh bedroom, I'm so grown up. It's just like, think of, think of, you know, your life now and how you want to feel about it and how you want your children to feel and how you, ch you want your children to know that you're always there for them no matter what kind of happens in the night, if they wake up scared, that you're just there, you're just there. So, yes, that's us. So, yeah, pop on over to Channel Mum website, have a look, see what all the other mums are doing. And if you do have any questions or anything about this, you can message below or go on over to my Instagram and send me a message there. You know, I'm happy to chat a little bit more about it if you want to know a bit more about how you set up yourself for co sleeping and those kind of things. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Good night. <laughs>